There's a post on Mark Cuban's blog from a number of years ago where he likened stock ownership to owning a baseball card. And it's a very, very insightful, kind of one of these tossed off comments that, um, you know, he, he makes in his unpunctuated style of writing. But he's very, very insightful sometimes about business strategy and corporate governance. And this, this comment about stocks being like baseball cards, many stocks, not all, is actually very, very helpful because it gets you as an investor to think about what kind of company you're investing in and what is sort of the philosophy of management and are they going to take care of you as a shareholder. And so let's just illustrate the idea of a baseball card. A baseball card, you know, you don't know whether if you buy a baseball card from a player today, you don't know if he's going to turn into the next Jer Derek Jeter or whatever, the next Mickey Mantle or some schlub, maybe it's just some guy that's gonna have a short career and be forgotten about, right? So you're making a bet that this card will grow in value. You don't know that it will yet. And if it's already a discovered card, like a Derek Jeter rookie card, well, that card already is gonna be high in value. So now you need to presume that there'll be some further re-rating of that, of that baseball card in the future. And you don't know what would drive that or whether that would even happen, right? Well, the same is true for many stocks, particularly tech stocks, during the era that Cuban wrote this, this article. And so you think back to the 90s tech boom or the early 2000s tech crash, lots and lots of companies were essentially baseball cards. Now, as a shareholder in a stock of a company, you actually have a claim to all of the residual cash flows, as we've talked about. Uh, but the thing is, you may not actually see those cash flows, especially if the company doesn't pay a dividend and maybe instead of buying back stock consistently, they actually dilute shareholders. So you actually may have a baseball card where you're stuck on kind of the kindness of strangers bailing you out at a better price. Or they call this also the greater fool theory, right? I'm foolish enough to buy this company, but I'm going to be expecting an even greater fool to take it off my hands in the future. And this is this strategy can work in roaring bull markets, for example, or you can you can sort of discover some early stage company that isn't in the mode of returning a lot of cash to shareholders and their business explodes upward and you can maybe sell it to someone else. But this is sort of a strategy that it depends on the kindness of strangers. It depends on management running the company consistently and it depends on the business growing, the underlying uh, marketplace growing. It's sort of there's some luck and the more things that you need to work out, that's more and more luck that you need. And then the most important thing is to find some greater fool to buy the asset off you in the future. I prefer to look at stocks actually as if you're going to own a piece of a company, you want to kind of think about what's in it for you. And so I like to find, for example, cash flows that actually accrue to me. So I think about dividend payments and a management that consistently will pay dividends. And then often, you know, companies that pay dividends tend to have very good cash flow characteristics. So that, not always, but this is a type of filter that will f sort of limit your choices into certain genres of stocks. Likewise, with consistent buybacks, companies that are burning up cash as they grow aren't going to be buying back stock. They're going to be diluting shareholders. Now, you can still have a greater fool and have that thing work out, but I try to avoid those types of situations. But again, you have to figure out where your style is and, and where it fits and where you have sort of talent at discovering things. If you're really good at discovering early stage startup companies, go for it. I'm personally not. So I think about this baseball card analogy as a sort of a lens to think through investors, uh, invest in investment decisions, and think through whether the management is going to actually look out for me as a shareholder. And so what I do is I look at their past actions. Have they been paying shareholders dividends? Have they been taking care of the company? Do they do things like dumb buybacks or you know buybacks at high prices where they have to issue stock later at lower prices? Or do they do dumb acquisitions? Are the management kind of is the management kind of empire builders where they want to grow the company at all costs rather than kind of manage the growth appropriately? I listen to what the management says and their language about shareholder value, and then I look to see if their actions meet up with the words that they say. Because a lot of times, just because someone can let words slither out of their mouths about shareholder value doesn't mean that they actually perform the actions. So you have to actually look to see that the actions match their words. And so these are the kinds of things that I look for to make sure I'm not buying a baseball card and then I'm not dependent on a greater fool in the future who you know would take the stock off my hands at a higher price. Sometimes there isn't a greater fool 
and you end up having to unload this baseball card at a lower price and there's no reward for you, no kind of accommodation for you as an investor in the company from the management. So think about this lens. Is your company a baseball card or is it actually a legitimate piece of a legitimate company that is run by legitimate management that is running the company for shareholders benefit? This is the lens that will help you make more money as an investor. As always, thanks for watching. Hope these videos are helpful.